chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. <clears throat> it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Thank you, Vicki. United Methodist Women are strong women. We are women who pray, women who try to increase their faith and hopes and encourage each other by putting love into action. Our strength comes by listening to God. I'm here this morning to represent the United Methodist Women and I'm really honored to do this. You see, I've grown over the years to appreciate all that this organization has done. When I was just out of high school, I remember I was approached by some women in our church, and, and they wanted me to join the UMW, and my thought was, and thank you God I didn't say it out loud, I thought, the UMW? They're old. My mother is in that group. Well, old or not, I went away to college, and I learned to appreciate all that the UMW does. My grandmother, Amy Moore, was involved in the UMW in this church. I believe in those days it was called the WSCS, or the Women's Society of Christian Service. They gave out service pins to the women in their groups that they wanted to recognize for their service. My grandmother earned her pin in this church, and my mother earned her pin in our United Methodist Church in Upland, California. Since then, we turned them into a necklace, and you probably can't see them, but I'm wearing them. One is my mother's from Upland, and one is from my grandmother's that she earned here in Gearing. And they mean the world to me. I love them very much because it reminds me of my heritage and my commitment to the UMW. And it reminds me that I wear the symbol to show others that my commitment to this organization is important to me. It also reminds me every day of my love for my, my mother and my grandmother and the love that they had for me and for their respective churches. The UMW is the official organization for women within the United Methodist Church. It was founded in 1869 and it is the largest denominational faith organization for women with approximately 800,000 members whose mission is fostering spiritual growth, developing leaders, and advocating for justice. Members raise up to $20 million each year for programs and projects related to women, children, and youth in the United States, and more than 100 countries around the world. You can see what an impact that this huge organization has on our world. The UMW has an important vision, which is 
turning faith, hope, and love into action on behalf of women, children, and youth around the world. At this time, I'd like to introduce someone we all know and love, Kathy Yost, who will tell you more about the local UMW. And one thing you need to know, Kathy will be the district UMW president this, ne president this next year, and we are all incredibly proud of her. Kathy. corner of the Great Plains Conference lies the Great West District. This is the largest district in the conference in area. The Great West District covers a third of the state, includes 27 counties, and just over 6,000 square miles. The united purpose of nearly 27,000 women in the Great Plains Conference is to care for women, children, and youth. There are three major projects that are supported by our conference. The Big, Con the Big Garden, located in Omaha, is truly a garden for raising vegetables for those who need extra help. The Big Garden was founded in 2005 by the USDA uh, Community po Food Project. The initial goal was to create more than, um, was to create 12 community gardens in three years. As of 2017, the Big Garden has helped establish more than 160 gardens in urban and rural areas throughout Nebraska, Kansas, and southwest Iowa. The purpose is to reduce hunger by increasing access to fresh produce and teaching people to grow, cook, and preserve their own foods. Thousands of people are assisted each year, and tending of the gardens is a community project to help people help themselves. A mission opportunity new to Nebraska is the Della Lamb Mission in Kansas City. Started in the 1890s as a daycare or a school for immigrants and migrants, the focus audience remains the same over 100 years later. The mission outreach offers hope and assistance to low-income people, mainly in the Kansas City area. Programs are designed to create self-sufficiency through education and support services, daycares, English as second language classes, immigrant legal services, and food programs are included in the overall program. A variety of supervised youth programs, and mainly on sports, reach young people to build self-esteem, self-reliance, and a sense of ongoing security. As part of the Conference United Methodist Women Mission Focus, we here help support this outreach as well. Started in 1889 in York, Nebraska, Epworth Village, first known as Mother's Jewels, meaning the little children of mother, was created for orphans. Over the years, as needs changed, the purpose of the organization did as well. It is expanded to meet the bigger need of providing foster care to children and to provide in-home parenting and homemaking classes for parents. This helps keep children in a healthy and safe family unit. A daycare for children is the newest service for families that helps meet the need for restoring the home to a safe level. The Della Land Ministry and Epworth are part of the National Mission Institute of United Methodist Women. Locally, our unit of less than 30 women of all ages supports all the national missions. We provide for many local society-based programs as well. To help complete the kitchen renovation in our church, the United Methodist Women purchased the stainless steel shelving for the pantry. We annually give money and or supplies to the Doves, Stuff the Bus Project, to UMCOR, the Coat and Mitten Drive in the Fall, and numerous other activities. After a lesson from the organizer of the Firefighters Ministry, our unit provided them with a monetary gift. Our largest annual gift is to provide a $600 need-based scholarship to a United, uh, University of Nebraska Medical College in Scottsbluff campus 
to a nursing student. Last year, we were able to provide two scholarships. When we hear of a need, the United Methodist Women is here to respond to that need. Before the beginning of the school this year, we will be providing hygiene supplies for Gearing Junior High students. It was a need brought to our attention by one of the teachers, Jan Vitterkoff. We do need your help. Join United Methodist Women and support the missions of the United Methodist Women. Bring cookies for the annual cookie walk each year. We've had this for over 30 years now, and it's the first Saturday of December. This is a whole church project, not just the 30 women who actually belong. The Cookie Walk is our largest fundraiser, and we would not be able to fund the many projects we do without it. The United Methodist Women tie into the overall mission goals of our church. Therefore, we rely on your help. UMW provides spiritual growth, fun and fellowship, great refreshments, and a really good purpose of being in love with action. Every woman is invited and encouraged to join because it's the Jesus thing to do to bring glory to God. United Methodist women are strong women. Missions are especially held close by this organization. And I'd like to share with you the way this vision of the UMW has helped me in the sense of mission for the church. I was in my senior year of college when it occurred to me that maybe I'd like to do something with my life. I decided to apply to the Board of Global Ministries at the United Methodist Church. I applied specifically to the US2 program, which simply means United States for two years. They send college graduates somewhere in the United States to work for two years in a mission capacity. In my case, since I was from Southern California, they sent me, in their wisdom, to central Minnesota. In other words, they sent me from a very warm, populated climate to a very rural, seasonal climate. I began my U.S. 2 experience in March, and there was snow everywhere. Remember the UMW vision, turning faith, hope, and love into action? Well, I had some faith, hope, and love, but at first it seemed that it was as covered up inside of me as the snow covered up the ground outside. I heard words that were so very foreign to me, words like flurries, cabin fever, snow days, what in the world? And what do you mean, wood ticks? Now that one almost had me running home, I kid you not. And yet inside me, I heard the heartwarming voice of God saying, I am with you, Lois. Am I not greater than the wood tick? <laughs> yes, God. Yes, you are. My duties were mostly working with children and youth. However, I was really blessed to have been given the task of visiting the home center as well. The minister I worked with pastored three small rural churches in Deer Creek, Henning, and Ottertail, Minnesota. These churches were part of a larger parish consisting of 10 or 11 churches. I also worked once a week for another parish consisting of three churches. Every Wednesday, I taught released time education to fifth and sixth junior high and high school kids. The kids left their school and they walked over to the church for an hour of religious education. This was a great opp opportunity to know other youth in the area and get our, all of our youth together. The people in the parish knew that the minister had, had applied to the US2 program for a parish worker, and that's what, that was my title, a parish worker. One day in the grocery store, I ran into a lady from one of our churches, and she was there shopping with her sister, and she saw me, and she goes, oh, I wanted to introduce you to my sister. Um, Lo uh, my sister, this is Lois. She's a, she's a UFO. <laughs> I was
was trying not to laugh so hard, you try to bite your teeth, your inside of your gums. I was trying so hard not to laugh when I realized that, you know, maybe she was more accurate than I gave her credit for. These six churches were really far apart from each other, and it seemed like I was always running from one church to another. And sometimes I just did feel like an unidentified flying object. United Methodist women are strong women. Remember the UMW vision, turning faith, hope, and love into action. One beautiful Sunday afternoon, I took one of my youth groups canoeing, and it was a wonderful day. It was marvelous. There was no clouds in the sky. It was just the most beautiful day you'd want to take 20 youth canoeing. And we took, uh, we rented canoes, we got on the water, and, and it was beautiful. We were having a really, really good time. When one of the kids turned around and said, hey, Lois, look behind you. I turned around and I, I looked and to my horror, there was this cloud that was so black that it was green. Now, maybe you've seen something like that before, but hey, Southern Californians don't really get thunderstorms, but when I saw this cloud, I nearly, nearly freaked. However, I knew enough to get off the water. Under my breath, I pleaded to God for help in keeping these kids safe. I really was terrified. We got all the kids out of the canoes and onto the fields and laid down in the fields. And in my effort to get the kids to safety, I yelled at them, hey, don't forget to bring the food. <laughs> I guess my thinking was that, you know, if we were all going to die anyway, we might as well not starve to death. Well, it began to rain and hail. And the wind was so strong, it blew over the canoes, and it blew over everything that wasn't nailed down. I was shaking so much, and to this day, I don't know if I was shaking because I was cold or because I was terrified. I prayed and I prayed, and yet again I heard that heartwarming voice of God saying, I am with all of you, Lois. Am I not greater than the storm? Yes, God. Yes, you are. The United Methodist Women's vision of turning faith, hope, and love into, into action is a marvelous vision. There are many more experiences I could share. The US 2 mission experience, honestly, between you and I, it was the best experience that I've ever had in my life. I learned that when you put this vision to action, you feel like you've received so much more than you've given. Prayer is the tool that you use to stay connected to God, and that is so important. God loves us and wants us to share that love with others. United Methodist women are strong women. Our recipe is add a dose of faith and hope and love into action on behalf of women and children and youth around the world. Add a full dose of prayers without ceasing. Increase those prayers with listening to the heartwarming voice of God. Top everything off with a very generous dose of love. It's this recipe that makes the United Methodist Women strong women. Amen. I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward, please. As you give your morning gift, think about a little extra this morning. We